going to be speaking out of Exodus chapter 14. I'm going to start in verse 10. And my text says, and when Pharaoh drew near the children of Israel, lifted their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. So they were afraid, and the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. You see, the Israelites have left Egypt on the promise that God had something better for them. And they stepped out on faith because they believed that what God said was going to actually come to fruition. But now that they have stepped out on faith, they see that the Egyptians are trailing right behind them. And so right now what they're standing in doesn't look like what God promised them. And as they see the Egyptians coming up against them, they cry out to the Lord. And they said to Moses, because there were no graves in Egypt, have you taken us away to die in the wilderness? Why have you so dealt with us to bring us out of Egypt? Is this not the word that we told you in Egypt saying, let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians for it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. And Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord which he will accomplish for you today. Not when he's, he's not gonna accomplish it next week. He doesn't need 10 more years to do it. He said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord that he's gonna accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see again no more forever. The Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. And the Lord said to Moses, why do you cry to me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward. Keep moving in the direction that I said. I know the Egyptians are coming. I know the fear is upon you, but keep moving in the direction that I first declared when I started this thing. He said, but lift up your rod and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it and the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the mist of the sea. Father God, whatever you wanna see happen, whatever you wanna say, whatever this moment is supposed to be, God, I turn it over to you and I say, have your way. You know, every burden, you know, every obstacle you know every trial represented in this room, but you also know every victory attached to this pain. And so God, I am asking that this would be a moment where you sit in this room, where you would sit down in the depths of our souls, in the depths of our fears and our insecurities, and that ultimately you would make your throne. God, dethrone every fear. God, dethrone every sense of anxiety. God, dethrone everything that is keeping us from keeping you in the center of our lives so that we can no longer be dissuaded from what you said about us, what you spoke over our lives, but we will stay locked in and steadfast in what you've said. God, no room for anxiety, no fear, just your strength, your power, your anointing standing tall in me. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, guys, can get seated. There are... All of these theories about if you really want to know a person, then you can look at their children. Or if you really want to know a person, you can look at their marriage, you can look at their work. But I personally believe that if you really want to know a person, you should look at what they order on Amazon. <laughs> I'll tell you everything you need to know about somebody. We put y'all's Amazon history up here. Some of you, I would act like I have never seen that before. I don't know who that person is. That is fraud. 
I love that though, because Amazon is literally a store where you can get anything from, but it didn't really start that way. Amazon started in 94 as simply an online bookstore. But he knew in the midst of starting it as an online bookstore that ultimately he wanted it to be an everything store. But he realized in order for it to get to what he had in mind that there would have to be some turns of events. He'd have to be willing to change his method to get to what he had in mind. And so the title of this message for those of you who like to take notes is Turn of Events turn of events. And I want to talk about the way that there are a turn of events in our lives that if we are not careful will convince us that God has changed his mind when in actuality he's changed his method. He is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. He doesn't change his mind, but he does change his method. If we study the Bible, we will see ultimately it is a story of how God has changed his method time after time to get us to what he originally had in mind. So we start off in the garden, humanity, and we are connected to him. That's what he has in mind. And then we are separated from him. And so the Bible tells the story of all of these different methods that God uses to ultimately get us to Jesus and the Holy Spirit so we can return to what he had in mind when he created us in the garden. He changes his method. Started off the garden. Then we had the tabernacle of Moses. Then we had the tabernacle of David. Then we had the temple of Solomon. And then we have Jesus Christ. This isn't us just coming up with ways to experience God. This is God placing something within our hearts so that we can get reconnected to him. Because at the end of the day, we were created in the image of God. And how can you begin to reflect the image of God unless you are connected to him? because you are going to reflect whatever you are connected to. I don't know if you've ever been in the presence of someone who struggles with fear or they struggle with insecurity and then you go back home and you've picked up some of those fears and you've picked up some of those insecurities because we begin to reflect what we're connected to. But God says, if I can get them to be connected to me again, if I can get them to be linked up with me again, then they can see themselves the way that I see them. And so when we find the Israelites in this text, they're on this journey to get into position so that they can be connected to God. But God has changed his method. And I feel like this is an important message for some of the people in this room and in this season, because when God changes his method, it is challenging for us to not believe that he has changed his mind. (sighs) because his method has to change because he's not predictable. And his method changes because in the process of his method changing, he adds depth and layers to who you are that you would not have had had it gone the way that you thought it was going to go. Had Amazon just stayed an online bookstore, it would have never realized the full potential of taking over Whole Foods, of creating physical bookstores. But in the process of their method being changed, they learn what works and what didn't work. They learn when the timing was and when the timing was not. There's something that happens when God changes his method that changes your experiences and changes your exposure and changes your education. You need God to change his method. He can't be predictable or you'll be able to tell the outcome. I need you to change your method. You get creative when God changes his method. When God changes his method, it changes you. But we have to decide which direction we allow that change to take place. Because we must decide that when God changes his method that we don't change our mind. Set your mind on things above. 
that setting is an establishing. I'm going to establish my mind on things above. Why do I have to set my mind on things above? Because if I don't set my mind on things above, when God changes his method, I will forget what he had in mind. But if I can set my mind on things above, I'm not swayed when he changes his method because my mind is not set on his method. My mind is set on what he set it on. I got to say that until you get it down in your spirit. I'm not married to the method. God, I don't care how you do it. You can bless me any way you see fit. God, I don't care who you use. God, I don't care what city I'm in. God, I don't care what movie it is. God, I don't care which job it is. All I'm saying is that you made me a promise and I set my mind on the promise. I'm not married to the method. I'm married to what you had in mind. My mind is set on what you have in mind. So when the method changes, I have to learn to adjust. And sometimes I have to forgive you for changing the method because God does not alert us when he changes the method. We just look up and there's been a turn of events. Wait a minute. (laughs) God, how is it possible that you told me what you had in mind and I started moving according to what you said you had in mind. But now there seems to be a change of your methods. When Moses goes to free the Israelites, there are 10 plagues and he ultimately convinces them that they can leave Egypt. And so they are used to God showing up in a way that says, I've got your back, I've got you covered. If you move, I'm gonna move on your behalf. Anything that comes against you, I'm gonna cast down. God has, in many ways, freed them from their oppression, but yet their oppression is still trailing behind them. Have you ever thought that you were free from something? Have you ever thought that you wouldn't have to face anything again? And all of a sudden, that struggle that you thought had overcome comes up, running up behind you, and middle of nowhere, right when you were getting your joy back, right when you were getting your peace back. Now here comes that same old devil. Now here comes that same old depression. Now here comes that same old enemy. And God says, I told the enemy where you were because I wanted to lead them into the Red Sea. There was something about that enemy. Hmm. I'm getting my notes. So I see they came to show out today. (laughs) So Israel is moving in the direction that God says. And then at the beginning of my text, he says to Moses that they should turn and camp before this place in Egypt and in between the sea. So I'm headed in one direction and God says, I want you to turn. And the position that I'm gonna have you turn in means that you're gonna be sandwiched between Egypt's territory and the sea. I'm gonna just break it down because I want you to understand what's happening in the text. He puts them in a position where it looks like they're gonna lose because he wants it to be a signal to Egypt that maybe they're confused. But he tells Moses before he even leads him into what looks like a trap that I'm going to use their pride against them. Because if Egypt begins to think that you're confused, they're going to think that you are weaker than you really are. And they won't realize that I've got this C working on my behalf. God, I need... There are some territories that God has ordained you to break open. And it looks like you'll drown in those territories. And it looks like you'll be stuck in those territories. But God has already equipped you with what you need to divide those territories. So while everyone else thinks you're confused, and while everyone else thinks you're lost, Moses and God have an insider that it's going to look like I'm lost and confused. But at the end of the day, you're going to make sure that that my enemies recognize that you set a table before me, that there's something happening that they cannot see, that you need me to look weaker than I really am. (sighs) 
This is not at all what I wrote in my notes. But I feel like somebody is sandwiched between an enemy and a sea. I feel like somebody's stuck between what they thought was going to be freedom, but it looks like I'm going back to who I used to be. It looks like I'm going back to the mindset I used to have. And I hear God saying, I position you there for a reason so that it would look like a loss to everyone else, but ultimately it would be my creativity breaking some things open. I feel like God wants somebody to know that that sea that is ahead of you was about to part open. How am I going to do it? I'm going to use what's already in your head hand. I'm going to use what you already have in your possession. <laughs> Moses has this, this rod that he doesn't fully understand what all it can do. Mm. But God says what you have in your hand, mm, that thing that you're carrying, that you don't know how to fully, I don't know how to fully use this thing. I only know I can walk with it. I don't know what else it can do. But I hear God saying, I'm going to show you how to use that thing you've been carrying to do more than just walk. I'm gonna show you how to use that rod and break some things open. I'm gonna show you how to use that gift and break some things open. I'm gonna show you how to walk into that boardroom. I'm gonna show you how to walk into that industry and break some things open. I need you to look like you lost it. I need you to look like you're confused so that you can break some things open. Because I'm going to show you how to use that rod in a place where that rod wouldn't even make sense. That rod is helpful in the wilderness, but it doesn't look like that rod can work in the sea. It seemed like that rod would get drowned in the sea, but God said, you are the wilderness. Where I send you, that rod is going to work. Where I place you, it's going to work. I feel God saying prophetically that I did not lead you into that dream. I did not lead you into that business. I did not lead you into that idea so that you could drown. I sent you in there carrying a rod, a rod that's going to break some things open. It's not just a ministry. It's not just a book. It's not just a song. Baby, that's a rod. And if you ever take what's in your hand and stretch it out over for what's in front of you. I didn't change my mind. I just changed my method. It's a turn of events, but it's all still working in your favor. So you gotta get your mind and my mind, God's mind back in alignment. Cause if we agree in the same mind, then I can show you how to use what you have in your hand. <laughs> Moses plays the most important part in this whole narrative. Because if Moses can stay connected to God, Egypt can be confused. And Israel can be confused, but Moses is the one who can hear what God is really doing. And if Moses can hear what God is really doing, then he can learn how to use what God has already given him. Everything you need, God's already given you. When God first has an encounter with Moses in the burning bush, he says to Moses, what is that in your hand? It was his rod. And he tells him to throw it down and that rod turns into a serpent and then he picks it back up and it turns into a rod again. That same rod 
that he carried into his encounter with God would be the rod that God would use to part the Red Sea. This is perhaps the most meaningful miracle that Israel would ever witness because it would show that God could use anything. He could use anything to break over, break open what seemed impossible. God, I feel, oof. I don't know who is in this room, but there are some things that look impossible for you to break open. And when you look at what you have in your inventory, you don't have nothing but a rod that's only good on land. But I'm going into a sea that looks like it could take me under. And God is saying, I'm going to make the territory, ref I'm going to make the territory bend until it can become what your tools can use. I got to say that the way I see it. God says, I'm going to use what you have. And I'm going to show you how to turn what is ahead of you into what works for what you have. So Moses and Israel and Egypt and you have been in a season where it seems like maybe you stepped out on faith and God changed his mind. And I feel like more than anything that what God desires is for you to bring your mind back into alignment so that you are not moved when the method changes. Israel took their eyes off of what God said and turned it to the Egyptians that were coming behind them. And then it changed their language. They stepped out on faith. They stepped out in belief that the promised land was available to them. But the moment they stopped looking at that word and stopped looking at that vision that God had set before them, it made the Egyptians appear greater than they actually were. But there was a reason that God gave them the vision before he gave them the struggle. God gave you the vision before you encountered the struggle because the vision is a weapon when the struggle comes upon you. Because if you can remember what God had in mind, you won't be moved by the circumstances that are around you. You fight the vision, you fight the struggle with the vision. I'm gonna say that again until you get that down in your soul. Cause somebody has been fighting the wrong devils and you've been fighting with the wrong tools and you think it's about the industry and you think it's about the Egyptians and you think it's about a marriage and you think it's about your finances. The fight is over your vision. Because if I can get you to change your vision, then I can make your struggle seem bigger than what it really is. But if you would dare start fighting that vision with that, str fighting that struggle with that vision, then God can show you what he really has in mind. God gave me a vision about who I can become. God gave me a vision about what I can do in the earth. So I know it didn't work out the way I wanted it to, but that's all right because I still got my vision. That's okay because I'm fighting that struggle with this vision. Because God is not a man that he should lie. And the vision may be tearing, but I'm gonna wait on it. Because God did not give me that vision to let me down. And God did not give me that vision to torment me and to haunt me. God said that I would be the one who could break that generational curse. God said that I would be the one that teaches my family how to do business on a different level. God told me that he gave me a vision. I didn't even want the vision until God gave it to me. Israel wasn't trying to be free. They were fine being in captivity. But God gave them a vision that made them question their captivity. And there are some people in this room who didn't even know that they were held captive until God gave them a vision that changed their thinking. 
And because you gave me that vision that made me change my mind, I can't go back. I just got to fight this struggle with that vision. And I wanted you to know that that vision is stronger than that struggle. I swear I mean that. Because that vision has God's endorsement on it. That vision has God's power on it. That vision has God's provision on it. That vision has God's favor on it. I came here to tell you to get back to the vision. I know we changed this method on you. I know we broke your heart a little bit in the process. I know you got a little bit disappointed, but I came here to tell you to get back on your square, baby. We got a game to fight out here. We got a kingdom to establish, and I can't do it just by myself. I need some warriors to activate. Come on, activate LA, what's up? I need my warriors to get back in position. Hell, you may have had me for a minute, but I'm taking my mind back. I'm taking my vision back. I'm stirring up the gift of God that's down on the inside of me. It's time to start writing again. It's time to start producing again. It's time to start creating your own stuff. I don't need nobody to do it for me. I'll do it by myself. It's time for you to get back to the person who he gave the promise to. Because the vision changes you. And if you allow the fear and anxiety to make you shrink, then you are no longer the person he gave the promise to. I didn't give my promise to that version of who you were. I gave that promise to a vision of you who believed my word, who trusted that I was the one who could show up for you who trusted that I was the one who could part the Red Sea, who trusted that I had the promised land. And you got to get back to that version of you so that he can show you how to use what you have. <laughs> because you've already got what you need, you just don't know how to use it. And he says to Moses, he says, Moses, take the rod, your rod, take your rod, the thing that is already within your possession, and put it in your hand. He didn't say go find a rod. He didn't say wait for somebody to hand you something, but use the resources that you currently have. <laughs> to divide the Red Sea that looks like it could drown you. To divide that obstacle, to break that up in a way that makes you realize that when you take what you have and turn it over to what he has in mind, that he does the supernatural on your behalf. God says, I know what it's gonna to take to part the Red Sea because I created the Red Sea. I know what it's gonna to take for Pharaoh to back up off of you because I'm the one who sent Pharaoh after you because I wanted him to know that once you get finished chasing after them, I'm gonna take this same sea that I divided for them and close it so that this Pharaoh, this enemy that you see today, you will see no more. And I just want somebody to know that when God gets finished changing his method on you, that it's gonna stop every enemy in its track. That it's gonna make the industry look at you different. That it's gonna make the community look at you different because I don't know what method that is that God used on them. But it shifted, not just who they could become, but how I viewed them when it looked like their back was against the wall. God showed me that he would tear the wall down. Not my notes, but I do believe that the principle of this message is for those of us who have been frustrated and disappointed 
because it feels like the method has changed. And if I'm honest, God, I wanted it to happen a certain way. I was expecting for the method to be a little bit smoother than it was. Honestly. <laughs> I thought that my hardest battle would be stepping out on faith. And so I only had enough faith to step out on faith because I thought the blessing would come the moment that I did it. But God said, you were looking for the outcome. And I was trying to raise the nation. And because I'm trying to raise a nation through you, I've got to show you who all I am and what all I can do. And so I had to change the methods so that you understand the fullness of what you get when you get me. Oh. Had Israel just walked out of Egypt and right into the promised land, they would have thought, they would have not realized the fullness of what they got when they stepped out on God's word. But because God changed the method on them several times, then they recognized the fullness of what they got. I got a way maker. I got a miracle worker. I got a promise keeper. I got a healer. I got a provider. And I would have never known that unless he changed his method. And so I want to give somebody 10 seconds to praise God for the fact that he changed his method. God, I thank you that you changed your method because I know you better than I would have known you before. Had you just done what I thought you were going to do the way that you did it, I would have never started that own business. I would have never found myself on my knees calling on the name of God. I would have never met that friend. I would have never met that husband. But you changed your method on me. shouldn't have even been in this city but you changed your method shouldn't have even had that job but you changed your method and when you changed your method you changed me and when you changed me I became better I became wiser I became stronger I lost some things along the way but I gained more of who I was and I gained more knowledge about who you are I want to have a moment of prayer for those of you who almost need to forgive God for changing his method. This is a personal thing to admit to, but it is a real thing. And the reason why I think it is necessary for us to admit our disappointment is because when we don't address it, it becomes a blockage and we don't receive the fullness of who God is and the fullness of what he can do with what we have left. But he changed his method on you. I thought it was supposed to be acting. I thought it was supposed to be singing. I thought it was supposed to be easier by now. I should have been that millionaire by now. I should have been discovered by now. Because what you told me you had in mind doesn't look like where I am. And if I'm honest, I'm beefing with God a little bit. And I want to get back in position to a place where I trust that he hasn't changed his mind even when he has changed his method. And so there are some things in my heart that I need to release because I know they're keeping me from seeing the fullness of who I am in him. If that's you, I want you to come. God, God changed his method. God said I would be happily married. I'm going through a divorce. How is that possible? God said that child would be saved. It seemed like that child is going through more hell than I could have ever imagined. God, how, how is that what you had in mind? This doesn't look like what you had in mind. 
God, I know what you said. God, I was supposed to be this. I was supposed to be that. And there has been a turn of events that has made me question whether or not I should have even started this in the first place. God, did my pride get me into this? God, was this my ego? I thought it was you, but this turn of events looks like so much hell. I can't even imagine that it started with you. How could it be that this happened? It says, I didn't, I didn't change my mind. I changed my method. So get back in alignment with me so you can see how I'm going to do it now. Because when we become disconnected from God because of how he changes his method, then we rob ourselves from any access to even getting to what God said because now I can't hear him anymore. He can't call the shots in my life anymore because I'm so upset. I don't trust him like I used to trust him. I don't believe him like I used to believe him. There's somebody in this room and you're charging God with what someone else did. And because someone else disappointed you, because someone else failed you, now you don't even trust God. God says, I didn't have nothing to do with that. That was brokenness. That was their brokenness, but what I'm telling you is I can even heal what they broke on the inside of you. Don't hold me to their actions. I'm bigger than that. I'm better than that. And it was important that Israel got back into position and that they trusted that Moses still had a word for them because it would be through that word that the Red Sea was parted. I trust God. I trust him. I really do. I trust him because I have seen him time after time after time. I swear I've seen him. Take my ideas and take my plans and blow them to pieces and then put together something that I never even thought that I could have done. I thought I had to go through the wilderness. I didn't think I could part a Red Sea, but God showed me that if you listen to what I said, the impossible becomes possible with me. I've seen him show up in my life too many times to turn around and give up now. And sometimes he positions us in such a way that the only option is to trust him or to go back into captivity. If Israel had not trusted God, then the Egyptians would have caught them and they would have gone back to who they used to be. And I feel like those of you who have been feeling stuck and stagnant are really just in a position where you have to choose. You have to choose. I can either trust God or I can go back to who I used to be. But I will declare and decree that right now in the name of Jesus, that enemy that you see today, you will see no more forever. You will see no more forever because you're going to step into a new level of trusting God where you are going to realize that I have the victory over over every enemy that has been haunting me and taunting me and chasing me down. I got to trust God. Lift your hands. Father God. Father, we trust you. And we haven't always trusted you. Because God, if we're honest, there have been some things that have happened in our life that has made us believe that you were not the safe place that you are. And we realize now, God, that because you make all things work together and because your ways are not our ways and your thoughts are not our thoughts, that you were calling us higher in moments where we just wanted to be met where we were. And so, God, I believe that as these hands are lifted over this altar, that you are raising us higher in the spirit realm, that you are raising us above the disappointment, that you are raising us above those fears and above those anxieties, that, God, you are lifting us out of the circumstance that is there to define us, and you are helping us to set our mind on those things that are above. God, I'm asking right now in the name of Jesus that there would be a relocation that takes place at this altar. If you're not at this altar and you know that you need to be here, I want you to get as close as you can because we're about to pack up the moving trucks and we're being relocated. I'm taking my mind back and I'm setting it on the things that are above. I see you coming. I see hell getting nervous. I see the Egyptians getting scared. I see that enemy chasing you down. 
God, I'm moving my mind. I'm not going to stay in the mindset that you have failed me because you are not a failure. I'm not gonna stay in the mindset that I am a failure because you have said that I'm more than a conqueror. I changed my mind, hell. I changed my mind, depression. I changed my mind, suicide. I am who God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I am gonna write the book anyway. I'm gonna help the family anyway. I don't know how I'm gonna do it, but I'm gonna take my rod and I'm gonna divide whatever stands in my way. So God, I'm asking that you would reveal what is already in their possession. God, bring it to their mind right now. God, you've already given them an idea for a script. God, you've already put them in the mind of a mentor. God, reveal what is already in their hands that you can use to separate and divide the sea that is ahead of them. God, may they never ever second guess what you have given them and where you have called them when it looks like they could fail because they will live in the constant consciousness that God has not changed his mind that in spite of their flaws, in spite of their second guessing, in spite of their fears and insecurities, that you still think they're fearfully and wonderfully made. That the only reason why you still have them on this earth is because they are an agent of change. And so God, we receive that identity. We lay hold of it right now. And whenever a thought would wage war against this knowledge, and make us believe that we were better off without that vision of the promised land. That we were better off without that freedom coming. God, I ask that you would remind them that you would send them a messenger, that you would send them a word that says you are exactly where I need you to be. Trust me. Walk with me. Allow me to guide you. Because I see a vision of yourself that far exceeds what you currently see. Repeat after me, Heavenly Father, thank you for opening my eyes to who you said I could be. I'm sorry that there have been moments where I didn't believe it. I get back in position. I've changed my mind. I trust you even when I don't know the method you're going to use. I trust what you have in mind. So transform my mind to reflect your mind so that I am not moved by the method because I'm committed to the messenger. Thank you for Jesus. May the mind that is in Christ also be in me. A mind of victory, a mind of overcoming, a mind of submission to your will, and a mind of freedom over every darkness, every fear, every pain, and every insecurity. I receive his mind. I receive that truth in Jesus' name. Amen. Can you celebrate with me?